What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver in our lab, and you can see I've got a packed flow hood behind me here. So we are about to make our next batch of liquid cultures and start bringing out our cultures for this growing season. Now I've seen in some of the mushroom forums throughout the years a debate on whether or not caramelization will affect a liquid culture. So a liquid culture is a broth medium used to grow mycelium, which is the roots of the mushroom. And there's a debate on how long you should sterilize that liquid for. Now here on my farm, I do 20 minutes at 15 PSI or 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's enough to achieve sterilization. When I was doing this batch, I forgot that I included a few jars in my grain spawn, which I sterilized for an hour. And as a result, I've got about four or five jars with what appears to be caramelization. So you can see the sediments inside and that's not normal. Um, I'll show you what my normal jars look like. So it's nice and clear and see-through. Now, what is caramelization? So caramelization is a process, it's a chemical process that's still not completely understood, but basically it's just when sugars get broken down into different components based on heat or entropy, I guess. Um, so we use honey, a 4% honey solution for our liquid culture. And honey contains a certain amount of fructose and other sugars, which can be caramelized. So our pressure cooker goes up to 250 degrees and fructose starts to caramelize a little bit before that. So I use a local honey, Bjorn's honey from Boulder, Colorado, and the fructose could vary between 20 to 40% maybe. Cooking that sugar for a, an hour compared to 20 minutes, there's going to be some particulates that develop that don't really homogenize back into the solution. Now, do these particulates affect the growth rate of mycelium. Some people claim that caramelization will slow the growth of the mycelium. Some people say that the mycelium can learn to ingest these different one-offs of sugar, different particles of sugar. So I'm going to devise an experiment where with these four jars that are caramelized, I'll compare the growth rates compared to these other jars that are cooked for our normal 20 minutes. So I'll go ahead and flip this around uh, and allow you guys to watch me do my inoculations. I'm going to be pulling off from our, our uh, slants out of our culture storage, our long-term storage, and then I'll grow them out into liquid culture and just make some observations on whether or not caramelization affects the growth rate of liquid cultures. All right, guys. Okay, so I've got my workstation set up. We've got our clear liquid cultures on the left and then our caramelized ones on the right. I've got some lion's mane, uh, almond agaricus mushroom, Oregon maitake, and a pink oyster mushroom that we're going to be comparing the growth between the clear and the caramelized liquid culture. Uh, I just had to grab a marker to label everything and we can get started.
All right, everyone. So it's been about a week since we inoculated all of these liquid cultures, half with the caramelization and half without. And let's take a look at this growth. I'm kind of intrigued by how some of this turned out. So we'll walk through the results so far. All right, guys. So up front are all the caramelized liquid cultures. And then in the back row here, we have the uncaramelized one. So I'll flip this around and we can go through one at a time. So this is the caramelized lion's mane. You can see a really nice growth after one week. And then this is the non-caramelized. Significant growth as well. But I would say this one is a little bit more it could be the slightly larger volume. Um, I did draw off some of this liquid culture. Next, we have the almond agaricus, which there's a little bit of growth started on the non-caramelized, but then if we come over to the caramelized, there is definitely a little bit more growth you can see those tiny pieces floating around now we have the pink oyster without caramelization this looks really healthy really good growth and then we've got the pink oyster that is caramelized showing pretty adequate growth but not as thick as the non-caramelized one. This one definitely has a little more growth, but still pretty good. And then we've got the maitake. So this is the non-caramelized. It's got some really nice mycelium. And then this is the caramelized which not as much. So it seems like it, it did affect the maitake and possibly the lion's mane. Um, well, actually the lion's mane, it looked like the caramelized had more growth. The agaricus was unaffected. The pink oyster, this one had more. And then the maitake, this one also had more growth. All right, so I'm gonna give these another week to grow out before I run some tests, but I wanna test these out on grain and see if there's a difference with the caramelization. So far, it looks like everything's growing. So as far as any inhibition by the caramelization, it is kind of negligent. Um, the lion's mane actually showed a little bit more growth with the caramelization. And then the pink oyster, and the uh, maitake here, they had more growth with the uncaramelized sample. And then the agaricus mushroom were both pretty much the same. So, so far, there's not a significant difference, but maybe with lion's mane, there's actually more growth. What's up, everyone? So it's been about three weeks since I let these cultures with the caramelization grow out and I haven't noticed a big difference at all. So this is the caramelized maitake. Uh, so this is the caramelized maitake culture. And then this is the uncaramelized. And it really doesn't show that much of a difference. I plated everything out. And my final conclusion about the caramelization in liquid cultures is that it doesn't really affect anything. So there are more factors that are higher on the totem pole that will affect the success of a liquid culture, such as the contamination that we saw with the pink oyster. If you have a contaminated culture, you're not gonna be able to move forward with that. Also, the the recipe of the liquid culture broth. So I did my almond agaricus in the honey, which it worked okay, but I think that, you know, maximizing the food source for each species of mushroom 
which could get a little complicated, would be more beneficial than worrying about the uh, caramelization. All right, so when you're choosing honey as your liquid culture media, make sure that you get filtered honey. So for this last batch here, I did raw, unfiltered honey. I kind of had an idea of what to expect, and there will be a lot of debris from the, the waxes or even the, uh, the propolis, which is a honey substance that the bees put on the edge of their uh, beehives, which is antimicrobial. Um, so you'll get different fragments that are floating around in your liquid culture. So I prefer to not have caramelization just because of the clarity of the culture. It's not really a factor. Um, I did a post and I've got mixed feedback from this post and most of it is just, um, you know, experience based. A lot of people say that it doesn't matter and I thought I'd try it myself. So my conclusion is that caramelization does not affect the growth of the liquid culture. There are many other factors, contamination, the actual recipe for the liquid culture. Uh, main cap and stem wanted me to follow through on this experiment. Um, unfortunately, I'm running out of space before the market season, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the healthiest cultures that I have. I might revisit this in the future if I have more space to uh, grow out the different varieties experiencing car caramelization. I had an interesting response from Mossy Creek Mushrooms. So they said that they purposefully caramelize their liquid cultures. Um, it might be a little over the top because if you can dial that back, you have less cooking time, less energy going into the process. But um, maybe there's a point to be made. Maybe the mycelium can adapt to different sugars or sugar components that are created during the heating process. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on caramelization of liquid culture. Um, I started scaling up my liquid cultures for the spring rush. So check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. We just QC'd a huge batch and we're, we're gonna be releasing all of our strains for the summer. Uh, I'm also doing my micro well breeding, which is in the process right now. And then also, we're going to be ramping up our production for the farmers markets starting May 5th. Okay, guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. And until next time, much love. What's up, everyone? So I decided to do an update on the, the caramelized liquid culture on grain versus the non-caramelized liquid culture on grain. And I don't really notice any difference. So I'm gonna make my conclusion and go ahead and say that there's not really a difference for caramelization versus non-caramelization as long as both of them are sterile and you have really good cultures. That, those are the main criteria for producing a liquid culture. So I hope I busted that myth about caramelization. I'm gonna do more testing in the future and maybe I'll post some picture updates on the community, so check out later. But things are starting to heat up for the farmer's market season and I wanted to kind of close out this video and um, like I suspected, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Much love.